Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you these Arteza Everblend alcohol markers. This is something I've had my eye on for a while. They weren't available in the UK and now they are and Arteza kindly sent them to me. So thank you guys. This is the 60. There are now 120 also available. So they've doubled their colours. As you know, I'm not someone that actually uses alcohol markers. It isn't. I've got the Spectrum Noir, I've got the touch pens, I've got the Aqua, Spectrum Aqua, what other ones have I got? I've got a few and I kind of tend to use them for writing and things like that so not really what they're intended for. So I'm really excited and I have already made some cards and I've been really pleased with the results and I want to show you a really easy simple kind of format to use to just get a really nice blend because I for one I'm not very good at putting that pen with that pen or you know so on and so forth. I like to use my markers like I use my watercolour. So I kind of use one colour and then I will kind of you know add water to it and bleed it out and create a really nice blend and then maybe add a little bit of a darker pigment to it and that's kind of what I've done here and I think a lot of you will probably find it quite helpful. So this is the 60 Ever Blend Art Markers. They come in this really nice little carry bag and like I said I have already opened it all but I just kind of stuck it loosely back together so you can see exactly how it would come if you were to purchase. And then on the back here, I thought that was quite handy, you do also get this little swatch thing so you can just cut that off or leave it on there if you want and um, it has them all listed there. You've got a little zip on the back, so again if you want to keep any extra bits and pieces, you've got quite a nice little roomy area there. You don't have to have the handle on, that can clip off and actually I'm going to clip it off just for the video just so that it's not going to catch on anything or get in the way. So you've got your double buckle on the front and Velcro, so it's super strong. And then you open it up and you have all your markers. Now, first impressions is, is nice. You get to see all these great colours. You get to see your number codes and also the colours, the names of the colours as well. Then you've got your Velcro side, so I'll just undo that. So this is a really sturdy case. I mean, there's, you know, Velcro everywhere, so nothing's going to be falling out. Yeah, there you have it. So you've got 12 on each section. So there's 12 there, 12, 12, 12, and 12. Okay, and then you have room here for some extras as well if you want. So the case can actually hold 72, but there's 60 in here. And this section here comes out as well. Okay, so that's always handy if you want to just take that section with you. And uh, yeah, so I these aren't the order they came in, and they weren't really, I guess, in the blending order when they came, um, because everybody has their own way of doing things. So I've, like I said, I've already been playing with them, and I actually store them not in this, because I've got other areas where I store all my pens and pencils. But um, I just wanted you again to see how it all comes. So I'm going to take all the pens out now, and then I can talk a little bit about that. Okay, so here are all the markers. Let's have a little look at one closer. So they are a triangular barrel. They are double-ended. So you've got this end here, you have your chisel tip, okay? And then this end here, you have your fine tip, okay? These will fit on either end, the lids. So it doesn't matter, they both say the same. A410 rose red. But the good way to distinguish between the fine tip and the chisel is they do have obviously the little image there, but also this has the colour kind of little piece here. So when you put the lid on, you can see, and I've actually used that more than looking for the little pictures. I just know straight away when I pick it up, so even if it's like that and I can't see anything, I know that that's my fine tip end. So I quite liked that it was easy to distinguish because I have other branded ones and they don't have that. So the amount of times I've pulled one end and it's been wrong and I've had to turn it around and pull the other one. So they are relatively easy to take the lids on and off. I mean, with something like this, you need it to be pretty secure because you don't want any air getting into them because otherwise they dry up. So there, do, there does need to be an element of you know, force, I guess, but they're pretty easy and you can hear they click in really nicely. And just says Arteza Everblend Art Marker. And then you just, like I said, got little pictures and then at the ends. So that is how it is for all of them. They're really nice to hold. I quite like the triangular shape because it fits, if you think, this is a triangular shape, you know, in your hand. So the pen does fit in there really, really nicely. I do quite like it. They are shiny, so they're a little bit slippery, I guess. If you are colouring for a long length of time, you know, your hand may well end up kind of falling down to the end of the pen. But I, is that really a big issue? I don't colour for a long time, so probably not. But hey, 
I just thought I'd tell you. So I have already done a swatch. Now this was the swatch that I'd done as they came out of the pack really. I kind of just kind of grabbed them as they came. So I, what I've done now since, and I know they're all obviously like this, but I did bundle them together once I started working with them more. Now I've got a bit more used to the blends and how I kind of like them. I have changed the way that I store them away. If I remember, I'll take some photos of that and you'll see them in the end of the video or over on my blog post. But, you know, overview here of the 60, there's a nice variety. I see what people meant by there's not a lot of brown tones. I mean, there's literally a little cluster here and this one could kind of sit there, but it's more of the grey. You know, you kind of had that one. That's more of a brown grey, so I would sit it with the browns. These are your grey kind of tones here, but then you've got more of an iced blue there. So I would possibly bring that up you know, and sit it up with these here. So, so yeah, the yellows, yeah, it's an okay, nice mix there. Um, I think I'd maybe want a few more brighter yellows. They're quite a lot of mustard, more brown yellows. So the darker tones um, and oranges, yeah. Like I said, I've used these and I've been really surprised with how well the colors have come out. The way that I use them is probably a little bit different to some other people, more experienced people. I guess mine's quite a, an amateur use of them, but I really like the technique. I like the way that it works. So yeah, that's that one. So what we will do now is I will show you the technique and then I'm gonna make a card at the end. Okay, so I've just zoomed in a little bit closer now and I'm just gonna show you a few kind of easy techniques and just how well these kind of, you know, work. Now you do need an alcohol friendly paper. So this paper here is, I've purchased this from Hobbycraft. It's the Craft UK brand, and it's an A3 sheet, but I cut them in half and obviously get a lot then for my buck. It's 300 GSM. At the time I didn't check to see if it was marker friendly, but I've tried it and it does hold really well. Obviously you do get a bleed through, but you get that with, with all of your alcohol markers, but it doesn't bleed into the paper. It stays on top of the paper. So I'm pleased with this. But again, you do just need to check that you have something. If you were to, for example, color on copy paper, it would just be a big blob. It just wouldn't work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a color with the chisel end. And you can just see how, this is one of my favorite colors. Now, whenever you color, if you get a streak like that, that's fine. You just go over it again and it will end up kind of just covering and blending itself out. So there you go, I've gone over that a few times. And you can see now, once that settles, it will dry slightly lighter as well. And um, yeah, I just think it's a really nice coverage, really easy to use. And I love, like I said, love this color. This is the hot pink A4887, beautiful. So yeah, really nice. Now, if I wanted to use, what I like to do is using just this one color, I can get a really nice blend. So I'm gonna use the fine tip now. So if I just color, so say I'm coloring a flower. I'm just gonna color the whole area. So say that's the whole area of the flower I've colored. Now this technique works good with lighter colors as well. So I'll show you that. I'm just gonna also bring in Okay, I'm gonna use A487, which is the watermelon pink. This is a nice, a lighter shade, and this will show this technique as well. So again, I'm just gonna color. Okay, and again, I'll just show it with the chisel nib. See, that one gave me very little streaking straight away. See, that's just one application. I've got no streaking at all. So, but I can easily now go into that again, just to make sure. Okay, so, the, the idea when you're doing this is you need to kind of let it dry in between. So although it is touch dry, it probably is still wet inside the paper. So you just kind of want to leave it for a minute. So if you're doing lots of these, obviously color away and, and do what you need to do. But I'm just going to leave that for a, a few minutes. Okay, so now what I will do is I would say I want to just have a darker shade all around the outside of my flower. Imagine this is just one of the ends. I'm just gonna color right over that same section again. Can you see the difference between the wet and the dry? It's quite a considerable difference. So I'm just gonna, and then just roughly leave it like that. Okay, and again, I'm gonna do the same with this one here. So you can see now, when you go on the dryer, the difference, and that is just using that one color. So already I've got two very distinct um, shades there from that one pen. Again, now I'm gonna leave it. Okay, so I've left that again for a few minutes and now I can come in and again, go in really dark again on the very top, like so. And then here, like so. And this is what I find an easy way to get a blend 
with just using one colour. So already now, can you start to see, once this one dries a little bit more, it will slowly start to just blend in and create like almost like an ombre, so you've got that light to dark, but you're using that one pen colour. Again here, you can see it a bit more where it's starting to really blend in. And you can go into this as many times as you want, but what you don't want to do is ever touch the very bottom. You want to keep that at its lightest and just keep adding. So I could just even add just a couple of strips there now, just on the very top. And again, that will just create a real darker end for me. And again, imagine if this is a flower and this is the centre now of that flower. We want that to be really dark and shaded and then just kind of come, you know, come out to that lighter colour there. You do also get the blender pen in this and now I don't think they blend, they bleach. So what they do is they just lighten areas. I wouldn't say they really blend it. So that's my kind of thought on it anyway. But what you can do now is you could go over the whole thing, but see, I've got a little bit of like a line there. If I just wanted to, you want to start higher up and then kind of just slowly blend down and go right off to the end. Don't just stop because you might get a bleached line. It's a bit like when you use the Tim Holtz Distressed Oxide, you add water and then you add tissue to lift it. That's bleach, that's like fake bleaching. But you, you need to make sure that you're, you're quite consistent with it, with these. You don't just want to stop it because it could look quite, yeah, quite severe. So I can go over that a little bit more and it's quite gradual, which I like because some blender pens that I've used are really, uh, severe and you just do one line and it's yeah it can almost ruin it but can you see now how I've got that's quite a lot there so I need to kind of work that a bit more down here but the good thing is with the blender pen is you can then go in with color over the top again so don't you know don't be afraid that you've gone too light and you want to go dark and you can but can you see there so though they are easy to use a lot of people get really scared with using alcohol markers and myself you know I'm not one if you were to ask me now to pick out a load of other colors to to blend with this I wouldn't really know I'm not good with that but I know that if I just want to keep adding a darker here and slowly blend that out I can but the good thing is what you can do now is if I look at my my swatch here so the color I've used here is the A487 so which is this one A487 now when you look at the darkest part of that, it's actually looking more like A416. So if I find A416, which is this one here, I could then room in right at the bottom with a very thin strip and then back with this and just let that dry. And you can see there now that that A416 actually blends really nicely with the layered darker colour of the A487. So, and that's how I use them. Now the cards that I've made are these cards here. So this rooftop, the pink here, the green fence and the yellow door. So I've used four colours, but I've created all that shading by using that technique. So I went over first of all and coloured the whole house in pink. And then I went around the edges with the same pen and just done a layer. Then I went over again and done a layer and I just build, kept building it up until I got the darkest colours all around all these parts here. And then you'll see there that this kind of real highlighted area is just the first layer of that same pen. So it's a really, I think a really easy way to use alcohol markers. It's very quick and like I said, not much thought needs to be put to this. You just need to choose what colours you want to use and just go for it. And the same with the green. Now with the fence, I did add a darker green once I'd got that real dark kind of shade that I wanted. Um, I just went in with a, a darker one. So that was the house, really love this. I'll show you the stamp sets and dyes that I used to create that little home sweet home card, which I'm gonna be giving to my friend. And then this one here is another absolutely stunning card. Really enjoyed using this one. And again, I've used three colours. So I use this yellow colour for the bow, use the green for the stems and the leaves, and then I use this peachy colour and I just layered it up. So you see that real darker colour, that's just where I kept layering up that same peached coloured pen. And then I just went in with a very deep orange, just right in the very real kind of uh, darkest parts there. Again with the green, I did go in with a very darker green right at the end. But easy peasy, the max pens that were used on that, six pens. 
So you don't need to stress and worry that if you wanted to create that blend that somebody's used six different oranges to create that because that just absolutely confuses the hell out of me and I just can't do it. Um, maybe in time I might become more like that but I actually really like this effect. That is what I want. I want that highlight area with that deeper shade. That's it. That's, that's, that's the colouring I like to do and that's what I like to do when I'm using my watercolours and I've shared that in previous um, videos. So yeah, so I hope that makes sense. You can see again here as it dries, you know, you can keep going in. So with this one here, if I want to go even darker up here, you can really saturate that. And again, once that dries through, it will just naturally blend because it's just, yeah, it's just settling into its original colour. And this one here, I can bring this again and go out over the whole thing, even though I've already kind of used the blender. You can go right over that all again and you'll see there you just get a really nice ombre blend. So that is, that's my level with alcohol markers. That's where I'm at with them and that's how I use these. So to, okay, so I'm now going to make a card. So what I'm going to do is show you what I've used to make these and then what I'm going to use to make the card and then we'll do some colouring. The stamps and dies that I used to create these two cards that I showed earlier, the house is using the Daisy May Designs Welcome Cottage Stamps. Absolutely gorgeous. So you can see there, you get all the lovely detail and you get the three sentiments, have a beautiful day, home sweet home and welcome home and the picket fence. And then you get the dies to match. So beautiful set of dies. And the nice thing about this is, is that you can stamp your image multiple times and you can then die cut other areas of it and create your own decoupage. So you'll see here that I actually have these separate layers. So I just stamped the whole house again and just coloured in the windows and the door and then die cut them separately. So you'll see here you've got the frame for the door, which is what I used there, but you could then stamp the door again and die cut the inner part of the door to lift it up even more, to have real dimension. And I love decoupage and I love that you can have that option with this stamp and die set. So it is a really handy one to have. I love the image, it's super cute, and I like that you have the three sentiments. So you can have it as a new home, you can have it as a welcome home card, and you can also have it as just a nice kind of birthday card. So that's the one I've used for that one. And then for this one I've used the lovely Peony Bloom stamps. So here it is here, it's a lovely size and I like that there's not too much detail so you can really see your colouring. And I've used every part of this stamp set apart from the mason jar. You do have that option, you can paint the water and it just looks really nice as well. So I will definitely be using that again on another card. And you, you again you have that decoupage element. So you have the flower here and these leaves and the flower there is the exact image of that flower there. So you stick it over the top and you'll see there I've got that dimension. And again, just think it looks really, really pretty. And there is the dies for that one. Okay, so these come as bundles. I'll share all the links below on where you can purchase those ones. And then for today's card, I'm using this lovely A4 stamp set by Craftwork Cards. You get 22 pieces and it's called Floral. And I'm going to be using these here, which I've already stamped out. So I will show you them here. So they are just kind of sketched images so they're not they almost look like they're not complete but that's the the style of them and I really like that and I like that they're just very plain so again I can add all my color to these and then I will probably add some um, of these lovely sentiments inside the perfume bottles or the handbag or shopping bag there and you've got the bow so I've already stamped those out again I'll share the links to this stamp set it's got some beautiful lovely sentiments here in that lovely kind of brush letter effect and I stamped all of them using the Memento Tuxedo Black. So stamp it and just let it just kind of dry, set into the paper. Don't heat set it, just let it dry for a while and then we're going to start colouring.
okay so that's my images are all coloured so you just watch me there kind of blend them I'm just going to tell you the two colours I used so the first colour I coloured this one was using the A4817 which is the bubble bath pink and then I kept layering up around the outer sides until I got them dark enough that I could then bring in the A4887 which was the hot pink and you can see now but just putting a thin line of that around there and then going back over it again with the bubble bath I've got a nice blend there and just that deep kind of frame to really make this lighter colour pop and you've got so many different tones now within that and um, yeah I'm quite pleased with this once I stamp my image on it then for the little perfume top there I just used the fog grey which is A152 coloured the whole thing again kept layering up around the outer edges and then I went in with the noir black which is the A5000 just very very faintly and then just went over and blended it again with the fog grey and then for the handbag and the bow this bow I'm actually going to be putting on here because this works really well with this colour they complement each other well so I first of all went over with the arctic blue the A268 and just coloured and worked it and worked it and worked it until I'd lifted a dark enough colour on the outer edges to bring in this A265 teal so they actually work really well as a blend so although they're quite far apart in colour on the ends of the uh, pens here once you've worked once you've colored this one enough it does end up working really well with this one so that's one thing I would say that once you start doing this kind of one pen blending you can start introducing other colors and I think it's a much easier way to do it that way because a lot of these swatches they don't look exactly like the color they are I mean the A268 to be fair that's pretty good and the A265 teal that's not bad those ones I'd say were okay but some of these for example this one here which is now this one I'll talk through that so I used I went over it first of all with the pale peach which is the A9426 but if I put that against the A it's actually much much darker so if you layer and layer and layer you get this really nice dark outer edge and then I was able to introduce the apricot the a2497 which is this one here so you can see there they are quite similar that's why they worked well together and then when i got that dark enough this one here which was the coral the a416 which is all the way up here you can see the difference in the colors but it works really well and i was able to get a nice blend of that one so those three now although looking at them you wouldn't think looking at the lids but they actually work really well together so they will stay as little bundles for me because I know these colours work well together and that's what I will do with this and that's what I'd already started to do before the video is you go through and kind of start grouping together your blends and then you know you know they're ready to go when you need them so those are the three that I have or four things that I've coloured I'm now going to get these cut out and I'm going to create some cards so here are my finished cards so I have just fussy cut the bottles and the bag there and I kept them all the same so I've just got a different embossed background for each one and then that kind of really kind of matches it I've put a bow on these here and that one obviously I stuck the bow that I actually coloured so they're very simple but they really do you know show that image and allow it to kind of pop on the card which I really like and um, yeah really pleased with how they've come together and again just to show you those two there so very different style cards but using the exact same colouring method and um, I think it all comes together and works really really well there you have it guys that is my review and demo of these alcohol markers by Arteza the Everblends I think they're great and I love the cards that I've made so I hope you've enjoyed this review and demo please pop any kind of questions and the comment boxes below I will share all the links to everything used today, even the embossing folders, the stamp sets, everything. And there will also be a coupon code as well for you to use if you do want to go across and check out the Arteza website. You don't even have to buy these pens. You might see some other stuff that you like there because I will link up here my other Arteza product demos and reviews as well because there's some other great products there that you may well enjoy. So until next time, guys, please hit the thumbs up button if you've enjoyed today and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.